Okay, uh, good afternoon again, our presenters and participants. And one more time before the presentation, I would like to remind you that if you have any questions for our presenters today, you can leave it in the chat box so that our moderators can gather and the presenter can respond in the Q&A sessions. And uh, with us now, we gladly welcome Ms. Zhang Thị Mai and Ms. Nguyễn Hương An in this 30-minute presentation with the title, Students' Perceptions of Social Presence in a Blended Learning Environment. Ms. Zhang Thị Mai is a lecturer of English at Hua San University, Ho Chi Minh City. She graduated from Curtin University, majoring in Applied Linguistics. Ms. Nguyen Hương An is also a lecturer of English at Hua San University. And as an enthusiast in teaching and learning English, Hương An seeks different approaches to enhance students' ability to use English effectively and prepare them to succeed through exploring various factors in blended learning. And we do hope that our two presenters will bring us a lot of valuable knowledge in, in their presentation this afternoon. Please welcome them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good, even, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are very glad to be here at Viet Tison uh, 2020 to present uh, to you our presentation, our research called Students' Perceptions of Social Presence in a Planned Learning Environment. So um, our presentation includes six parts. The first part would be some brief uh, information about uh, the project. Then we will go through the literature review uh, together. Uh, part three would be our methodology. Then uh, we will analyze and discuss the data that we collected. Uh, part five would be some conclusion and implications that we draw from our project. And the last one would be some references that we use for our project. So now, Hương Anh, please. Yeah, so once again, uh, welcome everyone to our Zoom room today. We are very glad to be here. So starting with our, uh, with our um, background information of our research with the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, more and more universities in Vietnam have implemented blended learning. So as a result, there's a real demand to understand and construct a successful and uh, effective blended learning course. So um, that's the reason why um, a widely accepted uh, framework of Garrison, Anderson and Archer in 2000, community of inquiry, uh, suggested three interwoven components here, which are social presence, teaching presence and cognitive presence. So due to its scope and scale with the main focus on social presence, our research is aimed at exploring social presence and students' perceptions of social presence. So with that aim in mind, we would like to answer the two research questions here. One, how do st the students at Hwasen University perceive social presence in their blended learning course? And two, what elements do the students at Hwasan University consider most and least important in constructing social presence in blended learning? Now, Ms. Mai will continue with a brief review of relevant articles and other works related to our research area. Okay, so I bet that all of you here have heard a lot about blended learning, right? So there are a lot of definitions of blended learning, but in its common consent, mm -hmm. blended learning is the combination of traditional and online learning. This is by Graham in 2013. How about social presence? What is it? So social, social presence, according to a definition of Garrison in 2009, it is the, the ability of participants to identify with the community, for example, a learning community communicate purposefully in a trusting environment, 
uh, and develop interpersonal relationships while still protecting their own individual personalities. So in other words, social presence is how a person portrays himself, uh, be aware of other people and construct interpersonal communications with other people in um, a learning environment. It can be a computer-based or a face-to-face -face or a blended learning environment. So what are some uh, roles of social presence? Uh, first, according to Tu and McIsaac in 2002, a high level of social presence can raise the level of interaction um, and it can also have an impact on learners' performance and the satisfaction with the instructors. This is by Richardson and Swan in 2003. This is because social presence can reduce the distance and serve as a platform for better communication, better interaction between teacher and student or between student and student in higher education. Also, social presence was found to be able to improve the performance of the students, especially in their writing performance. This is in a research done by Pichano in 2002. Next, Lang. Yeah, so uh, regarding some principles to establish um, and strengthen social presence, according to Garrison, Anderson, and Archer in 2000, there are three indicators of social presence here, which are first, effective expression, meaning the expression of emotions. Second, open communication, uh, which occurs when a member of a learning community um, acknowledges other people's appearance and attends respectfully to their comments and contributions. And third, group cohesion involving activities to maintain a sense of group engagement or a sense of belonging to the group. So we have uh, synthesized and employed 11 techniques indicating the three elements above from Argon in 2003, Lowenthal and Lev in 2018, Vaughan and Cleveland and Nurse in Garrison in 2013. Now let's take a look at uh, these techniques in detail. First, mm, the teacher sending an email before the first class meeting to introduce the course and to welcome the students. Second, the orientation section is the first meeting in which uh, the information about the cost, um, the cost um, assessment or the cost expectations or also the cost objectives, etc., is introduced to students. And next, um, the teacher giving frequent and effective feedback to students' emails or student messages or uh, in speaking and writing activities. Uh, in addition, the teacher being friendly and humorous is also essential to establish the relationship between uh, the learners in the class, in the course. And then having a profile picture and information on e-learning is also important uh, to, uh, to make the participants or the learners feel that uh, that person is real and then they can connect with them. Ice-breaking activities in the first meeting are also crucial to establish and increase the interaction among the members. And it's also a great way to let them uh, understand and know more um, about uh, the other members. And then we have the next technique, which is uh, academic forum discussions. So these, this, these forum discussions will uh, provide a platform for students to interact with each other online. And then we have uh, the next technique, which is the group projects, which, which are also very Common. These projects uh, at Hwasan University uh, normally last from five to nine weeks. So it's also a great chance for the student to strengthen the bond among the team members too. OK, 
Okay. Next will be uh, peer and group work. So these are very common activities. And then uh, these activities will help to increase um, students' interaction and um, collaboration, right? And then we have uh, non-academic forums and social networking platforms here, just like uh, Yellow or Facebook. So this one will provide another interesting and effective means of communication among the learners too. Now we have the last one, which is peer feedback. So which can improve interactions between members too. Now next, uh, we come to the research map methods. So uh, to answer the two research questions, so we employed a combination of quant a quantitative and qualitative design with a survey questionnaire of three sets of questions with 17 liquid type items and also follow up voluntary interviews with 17 students. Regarding the participants, there were 132 students studying EIC4, English for International Communication 4 at Hwasen University, including 82 females and 50 male counterparts. All of them have the internet access and they also have experience in blended learning too. Uh, for our course designer, so uh, in our blended uh, learning course, we had eight weeks of online learning and five weeks of face-to-face -face learning. And for online component, uh, the online components was designed on Moodle as a learning management system. Here at Hua Sen, we call it M Learning. And then for online meetings, we employed Google Meet and Big Blue Button interchangeably. Yes. And regarding uh, the data for the data collection, um, the questionnaire is uh, was printed and then distributed to the students, and then uh, they will uh, they would fill in. And then for the interviews, the interviews were recorded by the recorders in the cell phones. Now, everyone, let's take a look at our questionnaire, the first question here. The first question evaluated the effectiveness of some activities from the teachers to improve social presence in the blended learning course. So you can see here, um, we use the Likert scale with uh, number one, with, um, with number one from um, strongly disagree to number five, strongly agree. What? As you can see on the screen, huh? Now next, uh, mine will continue with the first part of um, the data analysis. Okay, thank you, Hung Ang. Now we move on to the data analysis. So to answer the first question about the student's perception of uh, social presence, we gave them uh, two sets of questions. The first set include A statements like this, you can see from the table, asking them to um, express their opinion about uh, some techniques to enhance social presence uh, that were employed by their teacher. And we use median to analyze uh, the central uh, responses, not mean in this case. And you can see that half of the items here were strongly agreed and half of them were agreed by the students. Now we go go to the detail. So first regarding the level of interaction, the level as well as the quality of interactions in a blended learning environment compared to a traditional face-to-face -face environment. 46% of our students thought that blended learning slightly increased the interaction between them and their teacher. In the interview, they expressed that this was because some online components um, helped them feel less shy. They didn't have to show their face and so they were not afraid to make mistakes. However, 28% of the students thought that the interaction actually did not change between uh, a blended learning environment and a traditional environment because according to them, this was because the interaction depends on the students' characters. 
So some Y student may feel more active in a, an online environment. Some other students may feel that they are more confident in a traditional classroom, while some others stay the same in any kind of learning modes. Now moving on to the first technique employed by the teacher, uh, the, the teacher sending an email uh, before the first class. Most of the students uh, are satisfied when receiving this email because um, this, email, this email gave them a clear vision of uh, who they are in the class, what responsibilities they should take and uh, help them be well prepared for the course. The next one would be the prompt response from the teacher to their messages. Uh, they said that um, the, I'm sorry, the second one would be the uh, role of the orientation session. Most of them highlighted the role of this session because this can give them um, some clues about their teacher, teacher's teaching styles as well as some, uh, some information about their classmates. The third one is the prompt email response uh, of the teacher to their messages. Most of the students highly evaluate, um, highly evaluated this, and they said that email was very appropriate for communicating in academic environment. However, some of the students uh, said that besides email, teachers can use Zalo or Facebook to communicate more with the students. Uh, technique number four would be the feedback of the teacher for the students, uh, activities like speaking and writing. Most of the students, half of the students uh, strongly uh, valued the feedback from the teacher. And in the interview, one student said that the feedback from the teacher uh, revealed that her teacher was very attentive and take care of every single one of them. And some student, um, some other student explained that uh, their writing skills can improve a lot uh, due to the personalized, uh, private and detailed feedback from the teacher. We, uh, we want to explain here that um, in the online component of our blended course, we use Turnitin, uh, we embed, embedded Turnitin in our online system. So whenever students submit their writing assignments or something, we, uh, we can give them feedback, very detailed and personalized feedback through Turnitin. And the next technique, technique is the friendliness and the humor of the teacher. Interestingly, most of the students uh, thought that this was very important uh, in improving the connectedness of the class. Uh, they said that uh, the closeness and the friendliness of the teacher can clear the unknown factors and uh, encourage them to actively and willingly take, uh, take part in the class activities and uh, they added that the teacher can uh, show his or her closeness and friendliness by smiling more often, addressing them by names, uh, telling jokes, or giving them uh, compliments more often. Now, Hương Anh. Yeah, so now uh, let's observe uh, the factors from students that enhance social presence here. As you can see on the table here, from number, factor number one to factor number six, the students show their agreement with the median of four here. Uh, and interestingly, um, and especially here, uh, they strongly agreed that item number seven here, peer and group work, did improve their interaction with other members. Uh, whereas um, most of the participants stay neutral uh, in uh, when it comes to peer feedback in improving the interaction between um, the members. Now let's take a look at the details. So first, um, regarding the ice-breaking activities here. So these activities are considered ne ne uh, necessary to establish the relationship with other class members since 78% of the participants highly valued this idea. So some said that these activities help them remember each other's names and then felt more relaxed and connected to other classmates. Uh, the second factor, most of the students here had the same opinion on 
the benefits of having a short bio on the web page since um, this would make them feel that person was real and then uh, they would feel safer conversing with that people online so as you uh, for factor number three and factor number four uh, on forum discussions here most of the participants reported that they fre frequently participated in forum discussions and they valued the sense of belonging when joining them. So some reported that forums, that the forums were a good way to enhance interactions as they, can share, they could share their ideas without a fear of making mistakes or they would, uh, the forums would help them feel more active and more confident. Most of the students also supported non-academic forums and social networking platforms like Facebook or Yellow in order to connect with other class members because um, uh, they addressed that Facebook and Yellow facilitated their communication. Now, for number five here, the participants also showed their great support on group projects in increasing the connection among the team members. Nevertheless, um, some of them said that the topics of the project should be more appealing and interesting to them. Yes, and uh, as you can see, the next, the next factor a large number of participants here, which is 94 out of 132 participants did cherish and prefer working in pairs or teams, both online or offline, because these activities would increase the interaction and collaboration with other class members. So I interact more when paired with my classmate and feel more connected while taking part in many different activities or I am willing to join a different group every day. Those positive comments from the interview, uh, interviewees uh, did signify the significance of peer and group work in learning. And the last, the last one on peer feedback, most of them stay neutral on peer feedback in improving the interaction uh, between partners or between peers. Some supporters uh, thought it would be easier for them to give straight comments between the peers. In contrast, you can see as students uh, 13 and 14 here and student number seven, um, they, they said that um, there would be some problems related to different levels of students or uh, invalid comments due to the lack of knowledge and skills. Now, uh, next, uh, Mai will continue with the second uh, research question. Okay, so with the second research question, we, uh, we want to check um, which techniques among the 11 ones that we presented before were highly evaluated by the students. Uh, so we asked them to uh, rank the 11 techniques here uh, on their importance. And this is the result you can see. So the most, uh, the three most important techniques according to them are first, the teacher's friendliness and humor. Second, the teacher's prompt and effective feedback. So two factors coming from the teachers. And the uh, next one would be pair and group work. Whereas the least important uh, factors according to the students that uh, contribute to uh, social presence are first, users provide picture and information on M learning. Second, forum discussions. And the last one, peer feedback. And based, on, uh, based on the findings, we can draw a conclusion that uh, most of the students highly appreciated the salience of social presence uh, in increasing their interaction with other members or in improving their writing and speaking skills. And then next in um, uh, boosting and then uh, strengthening cooperative activities and also in boosting their confidence in general. 
And then we also uh, have the, uh, we also have another um, uh, point that they, most of them said that uh, there was no big distinction in social presence between an online class and a traditional one. And also the student ranked the, uh, among the 11 factors that affect social presence here. They ranked the top three important factors, which are teacher's closeness and humor, his and her feedback, and pay and work. Meanwhile, we also have the list three important ones, which are sort bio and profile picture, forum discussions, and peer feedback. Now my will continue with uh, some implications for our, from our research. Okay, so firstly, some implications for students. So uh, we think that students should fully grab the uh, very rich opportunities that some online components in a blended course can offer, such as the, M, uh, the LMS or conference platform so that they can maximize their interaction experience and uh, also uh, students should be more um, should be well aware of their own importance and uh, their own responsibilities in enhancing social presence and they should not place the central role of this in the hand of the teacher how about us uh, teachers uh, first we should always bear in mind those techniques when we design and when we deliver any blended uh, learning course and uh, because students really appreciated the closeness and friendliness of us teachers we should be friendlier more attentive and more supportive towards our students so uh, they can feel more comfortable and open to take part in the class activity and to communicate better and we should consider the real effectiveness of some instructional design elements when students are reluctant to take part in some certain activities and um, it means it also means that students are not accustomed to these activities so it is very important for us to give them clear guidance and set clear etiquettes before any kind of activities and just leave some uh, some time for the students to get used to the activities for future research we hope that there will be a more valid um, model for questionnaire to be based on and um, also, we, we hope that future research will cover a bigger number of um, universities in Vietnam with a bigger number of participants so that we will have a more um, general and clearer picture of how social presence is perceived, as well as we will be able to measure the real effectiveness of uh, social presence in uh, blended learning. So this is the end of our presentation. If we, uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave your questions in uh, the chat box. Thank yeah, you a lot for your attention. Yes, welcome. thank you, thank you very much, Ms. Mai Chen and Ms. Hung An, and thank you all the participants for joining and staying with us. And uh, we are very happy to receive any questions you have to our present presenters today. They are waiting for the, your questions. Questions, comments, or feedback are all welcome. Yes, actually, this time during like, this situation, we, we do a lot of online learning. Mm -hmm. And after like a long time practicing, so we, we, we teachers you know, aware, we are aware that like Blended learning is some, somehow very effective. Um, but in, while waiting for the participant question, may I have one for you? Because I, I feel it really interesting in, in this one. Uh, so any, any difficult for you, my, I mean, as your experience when like implementing this, like blended learning, uh, you have some kind of integrated offline and online learning during uh, you just speak English, right? Yes. So how, how can you how can you divide the class? I mean, for offline and for online? 
uh, luckily at Hua Seng University, we, we had some kind of experience with uh, blended learning before because we always, uh, we, we have always focused on our M learning or E learning system. So uh, mm -hmm. teachers from our faculty, we, we are not like, um, we are aware uh, and we, we are used, accustomed, I mean, we are accustomed to on the online components such as Moodle, the uh, MLS, or uh, some uh, platforms for conferences. So uh, talking about, um, speaking of uh, technologies, I think it is not a big problem for um, the teachers from our faculty at Hwasen University. So, um, and also from, uh, I mean, from uh, the school, the university, they have quite a clear guidance before, um, before the course. They, I mean, they, they had a, a scenario, a plan, a detailed plan for us uh, to guide us how to, um, how to deliver the blended course. So uh, we are lucky that we, we get uh, great support from uh, uh, the university. And uh, luckily, most of the students, at first they, they did not uh, feel eager to take part in online learning, but after the third semester, um, uh, they, they, become more, they became more aware um, and more accustomed to this kind of learning. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mai. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, other participants, have you got any other questions for our speakers today? So there is a link uh, to our video on uh, YouTube uh, of this presentation. So you can go to our session to view to view it later. If you want to put any questions, just leave it in the Q and A session there. Thank, yeah, thank you thank a lot. You. Thank you a lot. Thank you very much. And participants, if you have any other questions, you can directly contact with our presenters today. Uh, maybe be through via this on website or through their emails. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank you a much. lot for your support. Goodbye, everyone. for helping us. Thank you very so, much. See you guys. We are very happy that.